Right then, welcome uh, to this tutorial on Well, it's not it's, it's not really a tutorial, it's more of a um, walkthrough, like a bit of an introduction to the Mages on Page Builder. And the reason I'm doing this, and uh, I've got Mitch uh, involved as well, is because we've found that the Mages on Page Builder is a really good, solid page builder for Magento 2 in the projects that we've used it so far. Um, and I've touched on it in some other front-end tutorials, so I've been able to speed up the development of Magento 2 front end uh, by um, using update scripts and in those update scripts I had code that was specific to the Mage on Page Builder so I thought it was right to do a, another video on the Mage on Page Builder um, as I've mentioned in them other videos though this is an add-on for Magento 2 it's not um, it's not a prerequisite of using up, upgrade data scripts just to be clear like you can put any any content in them scripts it's just more convenient when working in teams as uh, me and Mitch have found out like Mitchell jump in and do you know if he's doing a portion of the build he'll jump in maybe create a block in the admin using the page builder then he'll export that code paste it into an upgrade script so when I, I pull his branch uh, so to speak um, I get the upgraded version and the finished finished product inserted directly into my admin um, without having to log in which is really useful as I say when working in teams so Mitch has not been on my channel before so do you want to just introduce yourself Mitch Hi, my name's Mitch, I'm a junior Magento developer and uh, I work with Adam. Good, good man. Yeah, so Mitch has only really been working with Magento for six months. Uh, before that, we worked together on other projects, on some JavaScript projects uh, for, for an agency that we both work for. And now we both work on um, Magento 2 and we're enjoying it. Yeah, <laughs> you, yeah. See, you, see, you seem you seem as convinced as probably my viewers are with my tutorials. So, it's so scary, yeah, so, but, yeah. so Mitch has been in the driving seat really in his through his journey of sort of learning, if you like, of Magento two with the page builder because it's a really accessible way for a junior developer, someone who isn't sort of a hundred percent on the actual Magento code base to join in on on actual projects and, and add value to them projects and a lot of the time and and I, I, there's an art to it isn't there, using a page builder mitch yeah there is uh you start to understand the ebb and flows of how it works it's a bit like lego in a way so it's it's good for like beginners and entry level developers to kind of like get to grips with front end development with it we're gonna go through them in a bit aren't we i suppose and um, i think mitch has just got up on his screen now uh, just the the pricing for it because we want to be clear about this this video is by no means sponsored by mages on not affiliated to it at all we're just doing it as i mentioned for those those reasons uh, that i mentioned previously but we want to be clear like there is paid versions of mage on and they are better because you get more features but there is a free one you know if you're just following my tutorials and you want a place to start and um, there's a there's a free one here and i think it's saying there there's 10 elements supported in the free one mitch yeah, so with the paid version, you get the full loadout. But with uh, the free version, you get a lot of the features that you get with the paid version taken away from you. So if we look at the list of features that um, the free one provides, uh, you can see that a couple of things are X'd out. Uh, and I think the primary thing that you've got to look at here is that live preview has been crossed out for the free version. So a lot of the time when I'm building with this, uh, with the paid version, I use live preview to build my pages. So as I'm putting in blocks on, or content, it, this live preview button will open up another tab and uh, auto reload whenever I put new content in. So it kind of gives you uh, a clear direction in the way you're working. Have you got a CMS page to demonstrate or not, mate? Because I know we yeah, just we talked do. about blocks, but we can demonstrate it. It's, it's, um, it's a really good preview it isn't it's really good in it like the the the, the uh, replica how accurate it is to the front end so if we look here on the um, footer and we went into uh, one full column here as it loads we can see that we can preview the actual block I know it's a very huge footer um, no, no, that's but, that's that demonstrates it because as you can see, that's not being sh you're not having to go to the front end of the site to see that. It's, it's yeah, exactly. giving you a it's giving you a preview with the with the Lumafine header header in there. I think just explaining um, 
for people who haven't, but I suggest you jump in and see my other tutorials where I'm actually using these these blocks in um, in my actual theme development. And one of the one of the things I like about it has been sort of an old school Magento developer, Magento One as well. A lot of the times we'd use static blocks, and the problem was you'd end up having to dump a load of HTML code into the HTML, you know, rather than using the WYSIWYG because the WYSIWYG was just virtually unusable like you, you couldn't use it for anything really um i've tried integrating wordpress to get better results and all sorts of stuff but this with it being set with, with it being based within magento is far better than integrating a wordpress for your front end content as well um but just looking at it there if you just click close there mate just looking at it there you're basically seeing that footer block in how, how it how it appears on the front end so for the client, for the merchant who's not got the sort of web developer's brain that we've all got, they're able to see, right, well, my logo's in the middle, my other my other uh, icons, I'm assuming those pluses are where you're going to add the icons for the social, right, or something, or yeah. some other images. So Mitch can just demonstrate that while I'm talking. Um, and as you can see, it's fairly easy to control. This is the pro version. You can see all the different features that are coming up there um, for, for selection. Um, and it just accesses the Magento Media. Mitch is then able to go in and select media as as a normal sort of admin would and it I, I can't see we've not had any reports of, of anyone having any problems yet any of our clients having any problems it seems as if they're getting on with it pretty well and I think it's generally because it's fairly intuitive look it it's basically what you see is what you get but to a really high degree um so in terms of installing this mate it, it just co how, how does it how does it come from the extension developer? Uh, and, and then just bang it into your code. Right. And you don't. And that's the only thing you'd have to do is is take that merge some fo uh, folder and put it into your um into your code directory. Right. Nice one. So I just want to talk about the directory structure because I've experienced this. Um, that's okay, mate. We can we can see that. So in the um code folder there, just, just drop into the merge some folder there, mate. On the cheers. Yeah. I find this really good. It's really modular code. So if you click on the page builder there, essentially if you've got the free version, you could actually develop over the top of um, some of it. So it's broken out. If you just go into view, mate, and then go into front end, and then go into templates, there's all the different components. So I've found myself on some projects where they need something a little bit more bespoke. Maybe they need the slider doing something a little bit less out the box looking, or got some really good core Magento like product sliders, like best sellers that you can uh, output on a CMS page. Um, top products. You can even use um, sort of if and and statements that are akin to. Um, those of you who are familiar with promotional rules to um, filter those product sliders as well. well we'll just jump on them but these this code here you can essentially you can essentially extend that in your theme and I might do a video on that extending some of this code um, and being able to then sort of customize even further the images on page builder as you can see looking at that looking at those files there they're pretty readable like they tell you exactly what they're gonna do yeah, mate, just jump into back into the page builder and just show the I know you're not gonna well you could put one on the page but just show some of the features that you get yeah sure so if we wanted to add an element to this yeah yeah can, that's what I meant the elements you can see so some of the corresponding them, loads, they? loads to choose from yeah so, so the ones I find yeah. most sorry we're, obviously we're doing this remotely because this is the way things are done nowadays and I keep talking I keep talking over Mitch and I apologize Mitch but I just want to make a point the ones down at the bottom then with the magento logos these are really useful like you can access magento widgets so if you're a developer and you prefer to use widgets you can access those and and, and insert them directly into your templates but the one I was just showing reviews is a good one we've used that before aren't we getting the recent reviews as a block um yeah. Also, the product grid ones. They were the ones. Oh, product slider. So if you click on the product slider, I just want to show the features. We'll just show this one. We won't go into too much more detail, but I found this one is a great selling point for this this plugin. In that, that was what I was talking about there. Those conditions. So basically, you can if you go to conditions, mate. It's conditions tab. You can select the data source. So as I was saying, these are all default magenta ones. So you got new arrivals, bestsellers, on sale, 
most viewed, wish list top. You got loads of good ones that you can do here, even random. Um, but then you can filter them even more, a bit further down with, with them conditions. Look, mate. Well, yeah, that's the ordering. But if you look at the conditions, now <clears throat> we've used this on a site that was selling um, clothing, didn't we? And we set. <clears throat> for the women's landing page and the men's landing page to show the latest products for that category men's or women's but then we put the um you know the conditions in there to only show men's or only show women's on them pages and you know to have to, to have to write that module as a developer it takes ages like this speeds up speeds up development and the brilliance of it is it uses is the same grid as the list page as your um, recent products page so any changes you make to the product grid you know any customizations you make which I'm gonna touch on in in a future tutorial that I've got coming up I know I've only done the header and footer as we're recording this this uh, video here and um, um, but you can basically you make the edits once it's gonna look consistent right through the site and mages on the, the mages on um, components for products are no different to that they, they continue to look quite consistent um, or at least in my experience so far with it so yeah so I'm, I'm i'm loving using this i'm loving being able to sort of you know for want of a better word use mitch mitch's abilities more like rather than you know as we all know and you're probably watching these videos because magento 2 the learning curve is quite is quite steep and and it and it does your confidence knowing the good though does it mate, to kind of like be involved in proper projects at this level and then using this as access into the code because i'll be i'll be uh, honest the footer blocks the footer modules in the other tutorial where i've covered footer layout and, and editing the footer modules mitch wrote them all so he's he's utilizing the mages on page builder there and then using it to inform how he then displays that block on the front end in a theme. Yeah, and especially from someone who was starting off, um, just being able to create pages and actually visualize, you know, projects or ideas is is a big confidence boost. You yeah. know, and it's a, it's a great gateway into actually learning how to do it um, modular uh, and actually make modules and and doing it yourself. Yeah. So is actually just show the final thing final thing before we kick, cut kill this and um, just show the template system and when mitch is talking about modular we can actually use um is, are you in templates now did i not notice you go in there yeah i'm in templates yeah so you can create the modules as separate components if you like so mitch could create any anything here like you can see like in his predictive there there's other ones that he's created like if you want to create a particular type of header banner or you want to create a like a reviews block or a brands block or something like that you create them all separately and then jump into your cms page and you can add the blocks and you can move them around so you can create a number of pages from the same collection of components which is also mega useful yeah. in it so like here i'm going on to this element called mage on page build template and i can take that footer link that we was previously on yeah footer links it'll come up there we go we could take footer links or, or footer test while I, was, while I was on brilliant so you create once use multiple times which all developers love yeah exactly so we could you we could reference this main footer in the footer and it will compile all the other templates and we can uh, order it but um top to bottom uh and yeah good and then we could start good, making it? it look like an actual footer yeah a bit, yeah so that that's a different approach i think the approach in the other tutorial was adding the modules in the Magento um, code base and I ended up with four folders. But as Mitch points out in here, if you want to keep your code base down to a minimum, you could have one module in there that outputs one static block and you you um, piece them all together within the page builder. So that means that the client then has, the or the, the admin if you like, has the... Um, permission to then order those so in the other tutorial we had like a, a social block a footer links block and then a footer base and a newsletter block well what happens if they want to sort of switch one of those around the way i had done it in the tutorial you could only do it in the code by using before and afters on the layouts but do it the way mitch has just mentioned there where you output one static block and in that static block you have a number of templates then the gift is in the admin you can go in there and you could reorder all them blocks that essentially they'd cascade through to the page in exactly the same way as they do 
adding them as um, modules. So that's a really good point, that mate. Right, and on that note, Mitch has made a good point, which doesn't happen often, does it? Right. You know, I have these glimmers <laughs> of brilliance. Just kidding. So. Mitch is always making good points. Um, and, and he's... Uh, Considering he's been doing it six months, Magento two, he's doing he's doing really well. So I just want to go on record and say that. Um, right, we'll uh, we'll end it there. And I hope this has been useful. It's a bit free form. Um, you know, the two people having a chat about it, but we thought it was the uh, the best way to go about introducing this. I'm going to say again, we are by no means affiliated by Mageson uh, or or paid by Mageson or on their payroll. Um, the corporations don't control me and Mitch. We yeah, but pl- uh, well, only the ones us. that we're building Magento two sites for, uh, we're we're pretty much under their thumb. But you know, we're we're not affiliated to any particular uh, module. If a if a good module comes out, we'll I'm just going to show you. Uh, we'll, we'll do videos talking about it. And because this one came up in another tutorial, that's the only reason why we're doing it. Uh, there's no other affiliation there. I just wanted to be clear because I know people on YouTube don't like that. <laughs> so um, great stuff. See you later, pal. See you later.